Hey guys, it is John. We are doing a new type of live stream. Um, I'm calling it process stream for awesome just marketing. Uh, we figured why not occasionally when we're making something of significant size, go ahead and just stream it while we're doing it. It's not going to be focused really around this. It's just going to be us doing this. I'm going to keep an eye on chat so that we can try to answer any questions as they come in. Um, obviously my hands are gonna be full of meat and products, so I'm not gonna be typing them in, uh, but I will do my absolute best to keep up with the, the chats as we go. I'm on YouTube, so I'm doing the pop-out chat, so um, hopefully I'll be able to, to do that. Uh, no, it's not going to be shelf-stable products, so we're not going to go ahead and do um, this product unless you're in the area. Uh, go ahead and make sure you sign up for the giveaway because I will draw a couple of winners for seasoning and jerky. Um, what we'll do with that collection of email addresses is we'll send out emails anytime we're doing this type of live stream. Um, if I'm making something on like Thursdays, whatever, this will probably often replace those live streams. Um, so some of these are going to be planned out. We can talk about what you guys want to see made, what questions you have, uh, what processes you want to see us go over live. Uh, but a lot of them are going to be just like, hey, I need to make bratwursts later today for something, and let's just live stream it because why not? It's not going to change really the process on how I do anything. Um, I can see you on YouTube but not on Meatistics. Aha! Fair point, Andy. Um, Rumble is giving us the business recently for some reason. I'm doing everything the exact same way. Uh, if you saw me doing things on my phone right before, it was because I was having to fix that on waltonsinc.com. I will take 10 seconds here and copy over the embedded code to Meatgistics as well. Uh, I'm going to be back there more, Patrick. I'm just over here right now for... So don't you touch my cameras. Absolutely. Don't you touch my cameras. Everybody help me out in telling Patrick not to touch my cameras. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, so today we are making Lebanon sweet bologna, and we're doing it because you may or may not be able to see down here, I've got some specialty casings. Uh, we got casings in from a supplier who wants us to carry them. They are lined casings. Uh, that one may be our best chance at seeing this. Where am I? Patrick, switch to the tight camera. Okay, let's see what we can. Can you see? They have lined the inside really thickly with these products. Uh, so this one is black pepper. There is also black pepper and garlic. Where am I going? Oh, I stay where I am? Okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, this one is black pepper. There's also black pepper and garlic. There's red pepper. There's gyro or gyro or hero. And uh, Diablo. Diablo, I imagine, looks like it's just a bunch of red pepper flakes with probably some other hot peppers in there. Um, so to keep these separate so we know what is what, I just wrote what each one of them is. And then we're going to make a, a bologna out of this. But... At a request from uh, Dylan, we are going to make uh, sweet bologna. And we're making a very sweet bologna for this. Uh, so we're starting off with our Lebanon bologna. Then we're going to use sure gel like we always do on any cured product. We're going to add brown sugar. Uh, we've got our water. We've got everything already measured out uh, for you guys at home when you're making batches smaller than 25. The easiest way to do it is to take whatever the bag of seasoning weighs if it does 25 pounds of meat. So then you take that, like say it's 1.5 pounds. Then you divide 1.5 by 25, because that's the batch size. That gives you how many pounds per meat of that seasoning you're supposed to use. Then multiply that by how many ever pounds of meat you're doing. Like this would be 15, so I'd take 1.7 something it was, divided it by 25, multiplied it by 15. That told me how many pounds or fractions of a pound I need per 15 pounds of seasoning because I multiplied it by that. It's really not a, uh, a hard thing to do, um, but some people struggle with it. Uh, definitely always do everything by weight instead of by volume because 
it's going to be way more accurate. Uh, with a seasoning like this, it's actually not that big a deal if weight versus volume because it's got really uniform small particle size. There's no big chunks here. There's nothing that's going to throw it off. But with something like the apple brat, you can get way far off. Those apple chunks take up so much more volume than all the other seasoning in there that it can really throw you off. Jalapeno is another one. Um, so just always doing it by weight is the better option. All right, sorry. I got distracted yet again, as I always do. Um, and I was going to fix it on me just sticks. So I'm popping over there, doing that real quick, and then we'll get going. Um, I have pork butts that I bought at the store. They looked really trimmed up. Like, they took off way too much of the fat cap on them. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grind up some extra pork fat I have. And we are going to grind that once through a 3 8 plate and... That's all we're going to do. We're going to set that aside. Um, then we'll grind everything else through a 3 8 plate, 3 8 plate, and then through a 1 8 plate. And we'll get really nice fat particles in there. Um, and when we add that small amount of fat that I'm doing separately to the rest of it, we'll be in that 30% range. Uh, we've kind of ground on the live streaming before and I guess the sound isn't too bad um, for anyone at home if it does get too bad just hit your mute um, once again join the giveaway if you want to be notified about when we do these types of streams in the future um, we just figure it really doesn't take that much effort to set these up so if it can really give any benefit to anybody it's worth doing plus I like the term process stream all right, here we go. I've got my fat. I'm going to go once through a 3 8 plate and set it aside. I'm going to take a small amount of it and put it back through just to make sure everything goes through at least once. That was the white oil that fell back there, if anyone was wondering. Um, so I'm going to take this fat, I'm going to set it aside. And then when I put my meat in, I'm going to grab the first little bit that comes out, because that'll be meat pushing out just pure fat. All right, here we go. First grind like this should always be really fast. And you can see here, uh, still a good amount of that is fat, but I'm just gonna leave it in with the rest of it. Uh, I had this meat fairly well cold, uh, probably just shy of frozen. In fact, a few of the pieces on the outside are frozen. Uh, so occasionally you'll see something not coming out of the grinder that fast because a piece that's pretty much frozen is stuck at the top of that auger. And I just got to give it a push down in there to let it grab it. But in general, when I'm doing grinds, uh, I try to use my auger as infrequently as possible shouldn't really need to have a reason for it. Only reason would be that, you know, if a frozen piece like this one I just put down there gets stuck and you can see it, it just keeps skipping. Um, or occasionally, this usually happens more in the second grind, a pocket of air will get created in there somehow and the meat will just stay on top of the chamber where the auger meets the throat here. I have no idea why it happens, but it does happen occasionally. Super annoying. Patrick, can they hear me okay over here? You think? Uh, yeah, it's right, okay. So, no, no. no, okay. They'll probably tell you that they can. Okay. 
Okay, so here we go. All right, so as you can see with this beautiful meat lug, uh, we cut the front off of it for filming so people can see in as we're processing. Uh, we were sick of always having to try to tilt them up so Patrick could get a good angle down into the meat lug. Um, and we figured why not do this? Plus anytime I can use my zip saw, I always want to. I love using my zip saw. Um, but yeah, this is the first grind through 3 8 plate, so it's always gonna go pretty fast. Uh, if you're having problems with your first grind on a 3 8 plate, something's going wrong. Your meat may either be too hot like too warm, you didn't. That's gonna be an interesting piece to grind. It's long and all one. Well, took it no problem. But yeah, the 3 8 plate, your first grind, you've got these real big, nice chunks of meat for it to grab. As you can see, a good amount of it is super cold. Apparently I, uh, I had them in the freezer longer than I, I thought I did. But I am pretty excited about these, uh, these lined casings, specifically that Diablo one. I'm just thinking it could be a cool way to add some heat to a product without really having to mess with the ingredients. One piece down here does not want to grab. So I've got two things going. I've got those little bubbles I was talking about and a really frozen piece. So I just put some more down the grinder so I'd have something to push it down. And there we go. Get down there, frozen. And this is the part of meat processing that I always love. That first grind where everything looks beautiful, you got great particle definition. Your first grind goes super fast so you're not annoyed or bothered. Um, I just love making sausage. All right. So there we go. We are gonna switch out to our smaller plate here. And this. is where things can bog down a little bit. Now, we're gonna talk about a couple of good ways to make sure that we're grinding as fast as we can without sacrificing any quality. Oh, tell me I have another white oil thing up here. Yeah. Um, as always, we're using a different plate and knife. So we've married a plate to a knife so they wear at the same rate. Easiest way for me, at least, to keep those together um, is to get just a, a large zip tie and zip tie right through the center holes. Um, it is a real easy way to make sure that your same plate is married to the same knife all the time. Reason for that is when you have either a plate or a knife that wears at different rates, you're gonna get little waves in them and then that is gonna eat the other thing quicker. So if you have an uneven plate, that'll eat a knife quicker. If you have an uneven knife, that'll eat a plate real fast. So, all right, we're going to see how much of this we can get in here. Um, I'm going to try, oh, Austin is here. What is he doing? He's bringing me a toy. Oh, I have one of those. Yeah, I just, I'm just not smart enough to use it. That's the problem. Uh, but yeah, no, no, let's get that set up. Okay. We're making fun of you on Do my job. Everyone, please give, uh, give my assistant, Austin Walton, a hand here. <laughs> Yay! So I was about to say I'm going to add that pork fat, but I'm not because the entire reason I separated it out is so that it retains larger particle size. Now, the danger is that's in a meat lug by itself all the way over there. And I would like to see some bets on what happens when John goes to mix. Does he forget that pork fat is over there? 
A hundred percent. One hundred percent. I will find it when cleaning up and go, oh, that would have been nice to have. Um, but again, the reason I did that, added a little bit of extra pork fat, is when I was trimming these up, they really scalped the, the uh, fat on them. There was very little amount. So just had the extra pork fat, might as well add it. All right, so when we're grinding the second time, everything's super cold. That's a huge help. Austin, can you do me one more favor? Can you come unlock my computer screen? Um, we're going to have to find out a better way to do that where... Here, let me tell you my password. <laughs> you need to set up... Yeah, a, a what? Uh, oh, set up so you can log into your webcam. So it just... Oh, yeah. look at it. <laughs> The government watches me. Yeah, you don't even need a fingerprint sensor. The government watches me. I'm being watched. Well, you can, oh, at least there'll be someone you can show the size of your fish to. So. I'm being watched. No, what did I do? Get back. Chat is causing all sorts of problems for me today. Get out of here. All right, thanks, Austin. Um... I'm doing, I'm trying to do pop out chat, Patrick. So if you see anything that comes in that's not clear, chats that are clearly not from YouTube, yeah. uh, call them out to me because okay. YouTube won't let me pop out their chat. Ooh, do you want to hop in here, Austin? It's working. All right, so when we're grinding our second grind, like I said, everything's super cold, as cold as we can get it. Um, oil the plate and knife. You saw me oil the, the plate before. And most important, well, you want them to be a very sharp plate and knife as well. But really the most important thing is be patient. Try not to use your stomper other than when things get caught at the top of that chamber. Other than that, we really don't want them um, to be used at all. We want to add just enough meat down the throat where it'll start clearing the chamber. We basically want to see a clean chamber every time we add more meat down and we want to add just a little bit. I know it sounds counterintuitive. It seems like it'd be faster to push it down and stomp down with our stomper, but you're creating back pressure there. Meat is more likely to skip back over the auger away from the plate and knife and it's creating way more stress on your proteins than you want. So, here we go. My problem right now is I have so much meat around this throat, I can't even really see down into it. So you can hopefully see from there, we've got really nice particle definition here, um, clear sets of pink, clear sections of white. Once you start seeing everything kind of come out pink-ish, that's where you know you've got a problem somewhere. It could be your plate and knife are just dull. It could be possibly something's not set up correctly, but usually it's either a dull plate and knife your meat is too warm, it's been sitting out too long, or you're just jamming your stomper down too much. Just let the auger in there do most of the work for you, and just resign yourself to the fact that this is gonna take a couple minutes. Any questions, Patrick? Why would I have an orange? Oh, they're asking where's Austin's orange hat? Austin's a poser. He doesn't often wear his orange hat on non, uh, yeah, non live days. A lot of what? Team Orange? So. A lot of people do that. There's a couple reasons. Do what? Okay. Uh, somebody asks, why not add the seasonings in between the first and second grind? A lot of people do that. A couple reasons we don't. 
Uh, one is I'm not going to get to cleaning this grinder right away. And anytime, can I keep going as I talk? Okay. And anytime I, uh, anytime you add salt to a product, especially and then grind, but any action to it, that meat is going to start setting up really fast, and it's going to make cleaning your my this grinder a lot harder than it has to be. Now, if I was doing this and I had no no timetable, I just could do it at my own pace. I very well might do that, um, but it just makes cleanup harder for me. And I'm using uh, our 50 pound meat mixer after this, so I don't really have a need for it. Uh, if it was a smaller batch, maybe. But yeah, in general, I don't add between. There's another reason Brett told me once, but I can't remember what it is. Nice sharp plate knife make all the difference. Yes, it's a very good thing I'm tall, Jeremy. Exactly. Very tall. In the land of midgets, I am the tall man. Yeah, he's Team Blue, always leading by example. So we've got a 15 pound batch here. Um, I don't know how long we've been doing this second grind, but we're probably a quarter of the way through it. And as you can see, I've already pre-weighed out all my seasonings. Um, I am going to let this sit overnight. Uh, I was gonna start this at 10 o'clock in the morning initially, this whole live stream thing. Uh, but a couple things popped up, so I had to push it back. So I'm not adding any type of cure accelerator. So we are gonna stuff this today, and then I will uh, finish it in the smoker tomorrow. Letting it sit overnight allows that cure time to work in the meat. Um, the sure cure that we sell is 6.25% sodium nitrite. I keep looking there because I'm used to it. 6.25% sodium nitrite. The rest of it is salt and uh, food coloring. They do that to make sure that it doesn't just look exactly like regular salt. Because I guess nitrite basically looks like salt when you don't add things to it. And it's possible that you could really have a bad boo-boo if you replaced uh, in some recipe if you added nitrite instead of salt. So nitrite breaks down into nitric oxide and that's what actually gives it its curing power. Um, the important part of that, I guess, is that if you're not adding a cure accelerator, you want to wait 12 hours after you've introduced the nitrite in the meat to go ahead and smoke it. Uh, we like to do that after the stuffing process to make it a lot easier on our stuffer. If you go ahead and try to mix or grind mix and then hold before stuffing, you're asking a lot on your stuffer because those proteins, we've extracted them, they're gonna start setting up. It's gonna be a lot harder to stuff. It absolutely can be done. And it specifically could be done on large casings like this, uh, but in general, yeah. Yeah, 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 I know. Beef is stupid expensive right now. Or at least it is where I am. Like, we talk about it all the time in the podcast, but I've had some feedback from people saying beef isn't that expensive where they are. It's expensive in Wichita, so I don't know what everybody's talking about. The jerky that we use, or the beef we use to make the jerky for uh, the Walton's steak cook-off event was, I think I bought 100 pounds of beef and it was more than the 400 pounds of uh, pork I bought. Oh. Looks like meat spaghetti. Do, do, do. 
That's chugging through this pretty good. And like I said, super cold meat. Um, if I had to mix this by hand, I'd be having some problems with uh, freezing cold hands by the end of it because get it as cold as you can. It's always going to make everything that comes after, well, grinding and mixing and stuffing and everything way better. Uh, the two things we harp on probably more than anything else are protein extraction and temperature of the meat. Those are the two places most people run into issues when they have some sort of failure in their process. All right. Now I'm gonna take this whole head apparatus off. I'm gonna hook up our 50 pound meat mixer, put this in here and then we'll get to mixing. And yes, I did just wash my gloves. Gloves are starting to get harder and harder to come by again. So I'm trying to be good with not going through 50 pairs of gloves. All right, so this is the 50 pound meat mixer. It hooks up to the Walton's grinders, uh, does the paddle mixing for you. Meat mixers are great. They make it a lot easier to get protein extraction, basically, basically easier to do everything. But when you get to a certain age, even just turning that handle gets to kind of seem like a lot. Um, so just having this ability to let the meat mix or the grinder run the meat mixer is pretty nice. Ooh. So I'm gonna try and get this out of the way so I don't get any meat on it and then I won't touch that again for a few minutes. So no laughing at me if I have to get up on my tippy toes to talk to you guys. Ooh. you all lose $100. Only reason I saw that is because I dropped a little bit of meat over there and went to throw it out and had to kind of shuffle by that other lug. Ryan, I checked the other day for uh, the purple meat lugs, still not in stock. I saw them picking orders and they had a couple purple meat lugs back there, so I was hopeful for you, but no go. Still not working. All right. And I set aside a few pounds of this uh, just cut up, not ground yet, because I'm going to make that. Where am I looking, Patrick? Straight? Wherever. Okay. Uh, because I'm going to make that Land Jaeger Jaegermeister snack stick or something that somebody was talking about on the live stream. All right. So, a lot of sugar. Sure gel, which you could actually probably argue that we don't necessarily need because of all that sugar, but always add it. Um, I've already added the appropriate amount of Sure Cure onto the seasoning just so that there's no chance I forget it. Uh, something that I've gotten big into is checking my trash when I'm going to the stuffing stage, making sure I've added everything I wanted to add and some water. 
Last thing I'm going to grab is my trusty paddle. My paddle has been stolen. I'll use this Walton scraper instead, but declaring war on whoever has that. So when we had the old 44 pound meat mixer, they used to always tell us that it had to be forward and backwards the same um, like length of time. Apparently somewhere along the line, a change was made and it only needs to be one direction. This only needs to be put in one direction. Don't know, don't know why that change was made um, or if we were just incorrect the whole time, but early on with those 44 pound meat mixers, we were told they did have to be run in reverse and then all of a sudden they were told we didn't, they didn't have to be. Nice thing with a, a paddle mixer like this is A, you're not doing any of the work. I'm literally just stepping on a stomp here, watching it, making sure that it's getting protein extraction uh, we've done tests on this 50 pound mixer. Smallest batch you can reasonably expect to be able to extract the proteins on is about 12 and a half. Um, anything below that and you're just causing more work for yourself than probably doing it by hand or using the 20 pound meat mixer. Uh, also keep in mind that the 50 pounds is a total. It's not 50 pounds of meat, eight pounds of seasoning and additives and you know six pounds of water that obviously gets you over the 50 pound mark. So just something to keep in mind. So just watching it as it goes, making sure seasoning is getting distributed well, sugar is getting distributed well, and making sure I'm getting protein extraction. I miss my paddle. Uh, we're working on an overhead camera, Patrick just said. So we can see the mixer. Yeah, a uh, problem with that is we don't have a great place to hook it up to. And even the inexpensive little camera that, that's that one right now. But yeah, but even that, I like, I don't know. That was a couple hundred bucks. I, I don't want it to be sitting up there and fall. Although it would be an amazing shot if it fell right down into the meat. Might be worth it just just for that, yeah. Put it on a little bungee. Get one of those little uh, GoPros or whatever they call them. So I don't know what the inside of the gyro is for seasoning, but uh, obviously paprika, we showed you the inside of that one is black pepper. You can see that this has garlic and black pepper in it. And that Diablo looks red with some, what are almost obvious or almost certainly red pepper flakes in there. A good tip uh, when you're using a stuffer is you want to check your corners every so often. In the bottom, I did meat mixer. Uh, in the bottom corners, you just want to clear some meat and make sure you don't have anything that's sitting there and not getting moved around. It would help to be taller. I had a little uh, step stool that I would stand on for this, but. Uh, I get enough short jokes around here, even though I think I'm taller than Austin. Say what? I do have one, yeah. I had that thought as well. Um, and we're not adding any cheese or anything to this, so it's, it's really, I mean, yes, bologna is usually a beef product or a 50-50 or, or like pork trim and beef trim, but um, this is more to see how these casings work. Uh, if they do work, I believe the plan is to bring them in and sell them in like four packs because they are a little bit more expensive. 
we're going to find out exactly what the um, capacity is of each of these today. We think they're three pounds, uh, but we'll find that out. We don't do a lot with these uh, cloth style casings. I think they're called textile, but uh, maybe we will. If this works out well. I mean, it's a great idea. I didn't think they'd be this thickly coated. I thought they'd have like a little lining, um, but that pepper one is, it's on there thick. All right. Now, they go that way, so I, Patrick, I'm gonna need you for this. I'm gonna need you to come on this side and step on this uh, pedal when I tell you to. Just when I tell you to. Hold on. Upgrade. the other way I should have had this <laughs> on the other side. Oh yeah, because Walton's yeah. isn't even on the thing. Right. Yeah. Oh, but then we'd have to flip around the entire uh -huh. grinder. But Next to time. have the paddles assist us in moving that oh, out yeah. would have been better. So it didn't, didn't do anything? Nope, didn't okay. Help. Well, at least you guys got I'm to see me. So. I'm like, this is working against us. Why is this working against us? The funny thing is, is, I don't know if you saw, but I even looked down in to see how the paddles were moving. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's the right way. Where are you looking? Can you see in there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Ooh. Now, unfortunately, I need those paddles to move just a tiny bit. So because Austin insisted I use this, all his fault. Even when he's not in here. No matter where? We just hang it down about a foot from each wheel. That'd be silly. Because then we pick up all sorts of things we don't want to pick yeah, up. Not, yeah, no, not for all. Yeah, sure. For some. The technology's not there. It's not there? No. Oh. I thought you were referring to something that already exists. Device. Get in there. Now, you can be as thorough or as, you know, not with this as you want but it's all meat that can be stuffed, and anything you don't get out of this, you're just gonna have to clean out. So if you get it now, at least you get to eat it. And my cleaner's not here today, so I'm cleaning this. Ooh. Get this out of the way. Unhook these. So this is the stuffer that I've attached the uh, chat up um, that I've attached the suction cup feet to, which are final. They are on order, and um, we should have them fairly soon. I don't remember how much we're going to sell them for, but it's not a bunch. It makes life a lot more convenient when stuffing, especially if you don't have a good edge to the table. If you do have a good edge to the table, um, a wood general just vice grip works really well in keeping that base down. So as we're stuffing here, a couple things to make note of. A, when we load this, we're gonna load it in a diagonal pattern. 
meaning the first base we put down, we're gonna have it showing almost metal on the back and have it till about up here. Then on the next one, we're gonna reverse that. We're gonna do that all the way up. That's a good way to help prevent, or to prevent the creation of air pockets. So. And while I've never used these casings before, I mean, they look really strong. So I am gonna hold that casing onto the stuffing horn as hard as I can to try to fill out those casings as much as possible. Anytime we're making anything like this large diameter, one of the things we want to avoid is avoid. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, that was awesome. That was so good. Uh, it's just a, a appearance defect. Just looks better if it's all a solid wall of meat instead of having all these little air pockets in there. How we stuff our stuffer plays a big role into that. Also, how our air release valve on the piston is set plays a role, not as big, but plays a role. One other thing I wanna show you. Is a piston orientation. So if you can see here, how am I doing, Patrick? Am I in the center there? Yeah. Okay. My gap on my piston gasket is facing down. So it's, in my mind at least, just looking at this, you would think it would make more sense if it was the other way around, but it's not. You want the gap facing down. All right. So I'm gonna go get to stuffing. So I'm just pushing down, trying to form those angles I was talking about. All right, now it's an 11, can they hear me? So it's a 11 pound stuffer. I've got 15 pounds of meat. I've got 1.3 pounds of water. I've got quite a few pounds of seasoning. So it's gonna be at least two loads of this. Um, and we think each one of these is three pounds. Anytime I process and stuff, I come home and my dogs go nuts for me because they can smell the meat no matter how well I wash it off me. Are you trying to set up a shot of this? Let me try it. So that is what's on the inside of the Diablo. Really, I'm good? Really thickly coated. I've got red pepper flakes for sure. I've got crushed red pepper. It looks like I've got ground red pepper. Um, and I'm sure that's some paprika in there for color. Okay. So we're going to try and slide this on without damaging that coating too much. So just being a little bit careful here. Okay. So I've got it all the way to the end, going down to the stuffing speed, and here we go. I'm going to hold on super tight. Without it, oh, this obviously has a lot of water in it. So there we go. Um, we will weigh this before we smoke it. Let's see what it weighs. All right, for the next one, 
these casings look so nice. I like don't want to get them dirty. All right, let's figure out where my range is. Am I good here? Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. I figured this could just pick up or whatever if you want. Yeah, yeah, that'd be helpful for sure. All right, same thing. If I can ever get it to open, I'm gonna separate it and just try to get it to slide over without touching as much as possible. Seems like the best way to do that is to push down on the crease a little bit. Just try and slide it on. Okay. That one didn't stuff quite as tight. So which one is this? This is the pepper and garlic. I wonder if we'll have voids in that. Where are we? Uh, we should be able to get one more. That one should be significantly better. That's just the regular black pepper. All right, so I've still got uh, two inches up there, but I'm just gonna back it all off because that's not enough to finish one of these anyways. Nope, need another glove. Sorry, Brett. So we're gonna get all this in two loads, but just barely. And man, does that and all that extra sugar make it, I mean, it is sloppy. Okay. All right, red pepper, or no, red paprika. Stupid, I should have put my apron on. Which one, which one? Uh, this is the red paprika. That stuffed very nicely. The gyro, and then we we're gonna have a bunch more that we're gonna have to figure out something to do with because I don't have any casings ready for it. It's got cure, it's got sure gel. What, what do you guys want me to do with the rest of us? Snack sticks? Somebody give me an idea on what you want me to do with this. I'm 
Yeah, because I've got about a half to a third of a stuffer left of this, and that is, oh, I'll just use another, nope, I can't. I need to save one each of the casings for pictures in case we do go ahead and carry these. So I can't use those. Um, so I will probably just I don't know. I guess make snack sticks out of them. And I can't think of anything else to do. Maybe that gives us another chance at trying tomorrow just the uh, sous vide snack sticks. I think we'll try just cooking them in water the entire way. Normally we say pull them at 130. I don't like that idea. Because the snack stick's so thin, what's the point? Patties? Sweet bologna patties? Patrick, any I've seen anything any thoughts on that? What about loose? Is there a, any advantage to a loose bologna? Yeah, you can make your own eggs or something. Maybe. Hmm. Well, let's not keep our yeah, sorry. I'm pondering. I'm pondering here. Um, so we are going to go ahead and hold these till tomorrow. Uh, we'll go ahead and smoke them then. Um, I'm going to figure out something to do with the rest of this. And uh, then we'll go ahead and show you guys the results tomorrow on Meet Gistics. We'll take some pictures. Uh, we'll probably do some stuff on social media with them as well. And I don't know. Uh, I'm going to pop over to chat for a little bit, look at questions, uh, see if there's anything that I need to answer. All right. Uh, somebody says, well, maybe an over-the-ear mic. Oh, man, they're giving all types of suggestions for your microphone. A shock collar, I saw. Yeah. Uh, if they're not tight enough, can you manhandle those casings to make it tight? Um, I mean, you can pop it, like, down a little bit. It'll. They feel fairly good. It's that second one the black pepper and garlic, something was going on with it. It did not want to come off the tube well. Um, all of them I kind of had to manipulate my hand, but on that one it was worse than any of the others for some reason. I don't know if that's where I was on just the, the stuffing, if the canister was harder at that point, or if there's something more grippy on the inside of that casing. You can even see, like these are staying pretty much nice and round. This one is already flattened out a significant amount. Um, so. I'm thinking that one's going to be the toughest one for us. Uh, we're not. We're just going to go ahead and smoke these like we would like a regular bologna. Um, our Lebanon bologna is really more of just a, a smoked product that's a Lebanon flavored. Uh, what could you do if you were in the garage and ran out of casings? That's a good question because I'm. that's kind of the situation I find myself in now. Um, what I'm really thinking I'm going to do with these is just put them into meat bags. Uh, just have them like one pound meat bags that we can cook up and add to other products. I also have a sneaking suspicion that these are going to make fairly good, like almost like breakfast patties. And those meat bags are pretty good size. What you can do is freeze them hard, cut them with a saw and let them defrost a little bit and toss them on a griddle. And they work really well. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this is going to taste pretty good for that. So I think that's probably what I'll end up doing with it. During all this, usually have music playing in the background. Could you sing something? Um, oh, sweet mystery of life, at last I found you. Uh, that was from uh, Young Frankenstein. My mom used to sing it to my dog all the time and he would howl. Whatever, made me laugh. Uh, loaf pans. Loaf pans is a good idea. We could do it like we do the uh, uh, imitation bacon. In fact, I think that is what I'm going to do with it. That was a good question. Who came up with that? Loaf pans. Paul Wilmer. Uh, I believe that is um, process head. So good job. Meatloaf. So yeah, pretty much the same thing. Breakfast patty too. All right, well, whatever. I'm going to split them 50-50. Wait, wait, wait. Jeremy Ridley says, would you be able to get the consistency with the 20-quart Hobart's have dough mixer. 
So you're talking about a planetary system, like it does this with the, the dough hook. Uh, they sell different types of hookups for those. If you could find one that wasn't the specifically the dough, um, I think you, you could. Uh, your problem with a dough one is it's, it's almost got like a hook in the middle. So I think you'd end up with a lot just living there and not making it around to the rest of the, the bowl. If you have a Hobart mixer, I'm sure they sell an attachment for it. Um, those things are great. <laughs> that was hard on the ears, yes. Uh, oh, yes, thanks. Let's uh, find out how many pounds per bag. All right, we'll weigh them all and then average them. 2.8. 2.6. I knew that one was weird. 3.3. 3. 3.6. 3.2. All right, so clearly... It should be three pounds. If you look at these ones, this one specifically, I'm gonna have a tough time getting that closed and not having meat come shooting out the top a little bit. Um, I'm gonna crimp these closed. Uh, I'll probably use the uh, Walton's bag and casing clipper. Uh, we've got one back in the shop. It's that thing. Um, but yeah, so clearly three pounds easy, uh, three and a half pounds, definitely easily doable, uh, but no more than that. So three to three and a half, I would say, is the, the range for those. Uh, when we do get them, I believe the goal is to go ahead and sell them in four packs. Uh, we get them in larger and then break them down into something that would be more useful for a retail market. Um, and I, I'm sure we'd let commercial customers buy whatever size they wanted of them. Yep, paddle. Are you talking about the dough paddle, Jeremy? Live streaming sausage making is a great idea. Not only for the season sausage making. Yeah, honestly, man, we just thought it'd be fun. Um, I don't know. I like talking and I like making sausage. Um, Some of them we might not even talk during, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Some of them, eh, no matter what, I'll at least have the chat up. So generally, like, we have Patrick in here for this one because it's the first time we're doing it. But in general, we're going to get a big monitor and we're going to throw chat up there so that I can just do what I'm doing and look up and and talk and respond. Uh, that way there's still some interaction. You guys can still ask questions. What'll be interesting is when we do some more like, hey, what do you guys wanna see us do live stuff? Um, like if there are specific questions people have on, uh, you know, I have problem with protein extraction. Can you go over that in great depth? We'll make a snack stick and we'll focus on, on that a lot. I don't have a great idea yet as to where we're gonna make that decision. It'll be some, somewhere on meat logistics. Uh, whether that's a new topic, whether it's a new topic every time, I don't know, but we'll figure that out. Um, make sure while you're here that you pop on over, enter that live stream. I'm going to draw two winners. Nobody has to be here. I'm going to do it after anyways, as you can probably see, I'm starting to sweat. Um, but that's what I'm going to use to start creating an email list so that I can send out emails when we know we're going to do something and uh, when they just like pop up. We're like, oh, well, we got to make bratwurst. We might as well film it. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right. Thanks, guys.